Hello. Today I have my friend Charlie, who just sneezed, to visit while I'm reading the next chapter of Save Me a Seat. Charlie, we're on chapter 15. <clears throat> Ravi. The eyes are the window to the world, Ama always says. When I was little, she would look into my eyes and tell me they were bright and sparkling. Like, the, uh, like my mind. Therefore, before Dr. Batra discovered I could hardly see, uh, that was before Dr. Batra discovered that I could hardly see. Sorry about that, Charlie, I messed up. In kindergarten, I had a serious copying problem. I could never copy anything correctly from the board. While reading a book, I had to stick my face so close to the page that my teacher, Miss Venkat, suspected that I might have some serious reading issues. When she called my mother in to tell her to get me assessed, Amma cried. She couldn't stand that they were questioning my intelligence. It was Dr. Batra who figured out that the problem was with my eyesight. Now I wear glasses. The power of my lenses is 13 and I can see the world clearly. It's nice to be able to see. Miss Frost gives me a book called Fun with Phonics and tells me to read along with the recordings of the first story. There is a picture of letters dressed up in funny clothes on the cover. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Does she think I'm a baby? I pretend to be listening to the story, but instead I turn down the volume and shift the headphones away from my ears so that I can hear what Miss Frost and Bigfoot are saying. He is talking to her about candy. I hear footsteps and people laughing out in the corridor. I recognize Dylan's voice. Last one in line gets a wedgie, he shouts. Why must I be stuck in here listening to baby stories when I could be racing off to eat lunch with my new friend, Dylan Samrim? I pull off my headphones and stand up. I have listened to the story, ma'am. Please, can I go now? I ask, but Miss Frost tells me sit, to sit down and eat my... Will I be trapped here forever like Bud Caldwell? Oh, I have to change the page. Oh, sorry there, Charlie, hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlie. Here we go. Hang on, you're okay. There we go. When Bug Codwell was trapped in the shed with the angry bees. Oh, I remember that part. That was scary. I often, I opened my tiffin box and slowly unfolded my napkin. How sad Amma would be if she could see me now. No wonder Bigfoot made such a fuss when Miss Bean called him earlier to read aloud. He probably doesn't know how to read a word. I noticed the fat red book sitting on the shelf nearby and realized what I must do. I finished my vegetable biryani in a quick, few quick bites. Miss Frost is still busy with Bigfoot, so doesn't that mean how he calls him Bigfoot? She's busy with Bigfoot, so she doesn't notice me get up and pull the heavy dictionary down from the shelf. I lay it on the table, open it up to the section marked A, and run my fingers down the page. Askew, assess, yes, there it is, assimilate. I narrow my eyes and slowly read out the words to, to take in, digest, incorporate, ha, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I whisper, smiling to myself and shaking my head from side to side. I will show Miss Beam this page and she will have no choice but to admit defeat. <laughs> I'll announce her mistake in front of the whole class, pump my fist and take a bow. How sweet my victory will taste. In the meantime, I eavesdrop and find that Bigfoot is talking on and on about He never says a word in class, but here he can't stop talking about chocolates and peanuts. Will it ever end? I look at the dictionary one last time, just to be doubly sure, running my fingers along under the words, this time very, very slowly. I wanted to make sure I have not missed anything. Take in, digest, incorporate. I bend my head in closely. closely. There's something else to integrate, to fit in. My finger freezes. Can my eyes be fooling me? No, thanks to Dr. Batra, I can see perfectly well. I read it again to integrate, to fit in. I close the dictionary and quickly pull my social studies book out of my backpack, turning to chapter one. In this context, Mrs. Beam had said, I read the passage and my heart feels heavy. Consuming and incorporating nutrients has nothing to do with Native Americans in New Jersey in the 1700s. Just a minute ago, I wanted to, one, announce my victory Two, pump my fist. Three, take a bow. <laughs> Charlie. But instead, 
Oh, come here, Charlie. But instead, this is how I feel. He feels like this, Charlie. One, embarrassed. Two, ashamed. Three, defeated. Miss Frost comes in and sits down next to me. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, she says. I know that you're eager, eager to get back to class, but I thought it might be a good idea for us to have a little chat. <laughs> there you go. What is there to talk about? Their taste of victory is gone. All I want is to dig a deep hole and hide my head in it forever. I'm here to help you in any way I can, said Mrs. Frost. We have lots of ESL material here in the resource room. ESL, I say. English as a second language. You went down, Charlie? Here you go. You can walk on the desk. <laughs> Mrs. Beam mentioned that she and some of the children have been having difficulty understanding you because of your accent. I hang my head. English is not my second language. It is my first. My English is much better than my Tamil. Moptop doesn't know, even know me, and she is describing me the way I speak. I can only imagine how difficult this must be for you, she says. A new school in a new country. Maybe it would help to speak with Mr. Garfinkel, our guidance counselor. He's very easy to talk to. I feel like I'm suffocating. Now I'm, I'm in need of some kind of counseling too? Please, I whisper. Can I just go back to the classroom? Of course, she says and pats my hand. Mrs. Beam should be back in the classroom by now. I'm sure she won't mind if you sit quietly and read until the others come back from lunch. I nod my head, grateful that my torture is finally coming to an end. Then I quickly stuff my Tiffin box and social studies book back in my backpack before Miss Frost can change her mind about letting me go. Bigfoot is looking at a magazine and doesn't even look up as I walk past. Would you like an M&M for the road? Miss Frost asked me, holding out a big bowl of chocolate covered candies. Alma doesn't like me to eat sweets, but I don't want to be rude. So I take a candy, a blue one, and put it in my pocket as I prepare my, for my long walk back. Miss Frost and I go down the corridor together. When we re reach room 506, she turns to me. How about we meet again next week, she says, once you've been a bit more time to settle in, once you've had a bit more time to settle in. I reach to the, open the door, but Miss Frost puts her hand on my shoulder. Before you go, can I tell you something? I think you've assumed something about Joe that isn't true. You and he could easily be friends. I shake my head no. Why would I be his friend after what he did to me? This morning in class, he tripped me on purpose with his foot and nearly broke my glasses, I say. That doesn't sound like the Joe I know, she says. Dylan saw him do it, I tell her. He told me. Miss Frost bites her lip and says, I wasn't there, but if he tripped you, he owes you an apology. And you owe him an apology as well for implying that he might not be as smart as you are. Just because Joe needs help doesn't mean that he isn't bright. You shouldn't assume things about a person before you know who they really are. Yeah, that's good advice. People are making assumption of assumptions about me too, I point out. They think I can't speak English or do math, but that's not true. Miss Frost nods her head. You see, she says assumptions are often wrong. She tells me to remember that. So that's the, the next chapter. And Charlie says, stay tuned. And we'll see if um, Ravi and Joe becomes friends. Until next time, say goodbye. <laughs>